Oh yeah, back with another Iron Maiden jacket. You know, we did the first one, and it was so much fun. I said, let's do what Derek Riggs says is the most difficult illustration he's ever done. <laughs> We're getting ambitious here, guys. It's somewhere in time. It's one of the greatest album covers ever made. We're sketching out Eddie here because I'm thinking about the aspect ratio. And normally I wouldn't do anything in the foreground first. But I have to get Eddie right. He could look goofy real fast. Because he's almost like a full figured, you know, character. So I wanted to make sure his proportions were not too big, not too small. So that I knew where the rest of everything would land. And obviously it's not the whole album cover because it's a narrower kind of aspect ratio. So I tried to get as much as I could in there but still have Eddie be the focus. Alright, here we go. This purple skies are friggin' awesome. I mean, and it's like, there's a part in the clouds, and it's this real clear moon and stars. I love that. It's almost like there's a spotlight on this particular scene. Just for a few minutes until the clouds roll by again. So it's almost like somebody's capturing this with a flash bulb of a camera. This murder scene. <laughs> I mean, even though it's not a, a murder scene, because obviously Eddie's like some type of police officer, right? I have no idea. He's taking down a perp. The old-fashioned way, right? Gunning them down. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Sorry, I'm drinking a beer, okay? You'd have to drink a beer, too, after doing this painting. Here we go. We go into the background here. And look at this. It's like a friggin' casino back there. That's how I imagine it, right? This is a real dirty future. Like, casinos, neon lights. I mean... You know, there's a lot of money in this town, but there's a lot of crime. And you need Eddie Maiden, police Eddie Maiden, to clean the place up, right? As the, the job is so dirty, they need cyborgs to do it. Oh, yeah! Anyhow, here we go. We're putting some moonlight in here. Doing the back was fun. A little Cinco. I, I don't know what that is. What, Cinco sign or something like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can tell what time it is because, like, most of the windows are dark. So, you know, it's late at night, you know, early, early morning, you know, two o'clock in the morning. That's what, you know, I used to have a guy that would, you would tell me nothing good happens after 12 o'clock at night. And he's right. <laughs> so here we go. Some more windows. There's a guy in the window there, probably standing there naked, looking out over the city. If I had, a, if I lived in a high rise, number one, no curtains. Who cares? And I'd be sitting in front of the window naked. Drinking a Jack and Coke, looking over the city, like, you know, with my nuts hanging out. I don't know. Wouldn't you? I Maybe not. Okay. Here we go. Putting more buildings in. This is beautiful, beautiful architecture. You're dirtying it up. It's not dirty enough, right? It's the future. It's very dirty, dark. Blade Runner-esque. Put a little moonlight in here. I love how the moonlight reflects off of all the edges, right? Yeah. But this is, is these very almost art deco columns here. I love that that curve in the column, how it goes up. There's a building in the background, more little little windows, you know. All these people living in this this place, you know. These little windows here, I imagine these are like where the rich guys, you know, have their corporate meetings. You know, they have their, they're almost like box seats right there. There they are. See, I. A lot, a lot of people like in the backgrounds here. Kind of screwed up here. Had to bring the casino down a little bit. Need a little more space there. This is like a catwalk. I don't know what this is. A tube, a subway. A little catwalk there. Yeah. Hard to get straight lines on this part of the jacket. A lot of wrinkles. So I'm just putting in different colors here. It's a lot of green, kind of a lot of gold type of, type of deal. This is these lit, I love these lit windows at the top, so people, I imagine that's a catwalk, like people walk through here. Webster's, they got a little advertisement on there, I don't know who they are, but they got an advertisement. Yeah. Here's a cool elevator, oh, I love this elevator, somebody's, I imagine this elevator goes right down, like, into those curves. You know, and down into like a shopping mall, or maybe like an apartment complex. Trying to get my colors right here. Let's 
I almost think like like everybody nobody travels around outside because it's too dangerous that's why they got this guy driving around oh wait a second here's here's my brick wall I was scared to death to do this I never did like send the block wall before like a block wall and I did this wall so proud of it come on guys once the moonlight hits it oh yeah I wish there was more wall in the picture because I'm so happy I put little cracks in this in the concrete there's some moonlight coming up the uh, the curves there. Oh, it's amazing how a brush stroke can get you so excited. I remember putting the moonlight up the curves. I'm like, oh, it's perfect. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to look. Excuse me. Yeah, this look. here we go. Neon lights coming around. This is this is a very wealthy city, but it's full, filled with crime. Like all these neon lights. You have any idea how much maintenance that cost? You know, so it, it takes a lot of money to run this city. Yeah, look at the highlights of the moon on the awning there. Oh, yeah. We got a neon sign here. Look, I love how it's it's Cinco again. What is it? Cinco, I think it is? Yeah, they, they, they're like the oil company. They have the sign in the back, all the way in the back. Now they have a sign up here. They're like, just like advertisements all over the place in neon lights. I love it. I screwed up right here. On the left hand side, department is way bigger than department on the right hand side. And it should be bigger on the right hand side because that's what's closer to you, right? Yeah. But here we go. Here come the fluorescent lights. The ice cold fluorescent lights. Yeah, the, the city's real dark. But here we are on the street level and everybody's got their fluorescent lights on all the storefronts, right? Yeah. That's right. Here we go. Kind of trying to straighten that out a bit because I, I feel like I screwed it up. All right, here's some fluorescent lighting in the back. Yeah. Kind of kind of lights everything up. Putting in the uh, concrete, concrete pillars reminds me of the train station. Kind of has all this concrete pillars here holding every massive concrete pillars. Like the real structural. And then like and storefronts down here, you know, with those glass windows and everything, glass doors. Yeah. Very. Oh, here we go. Archways on that building right there, kind of like slanted archways, like the the archways slant out as they get higher. I love that look. Put in the uh, the fluorescent lights back here. Here comes the coib. Dark curb, casting shadows from the from the pillars out onto the ground. I love that. Something going on in the store back there. Who knows? Some more neon lights, advertisements, hotels. Here we go. That I, I always thought that was like a little homage to Derek Riggs. That uh, that lettering on the window there. Here we go. There's some shelves in that store. Some people out there. See another person walking. They're casting shadows. Casting those long, dramatic shadows. Ooh. They send chills down the spine. Oh yeah, lightening it up in here. Needed more light. It's very bright, right? It's very bright. Darkening it up the background. I figure the stores continue back there. So I definitely wanted to add in more, uh, more stores back there. Yeah, there they go. They continue, but they're a little more, you know, a little darker. There it is, Pizza Hut back there. I tried to be as true to the album cover as possible, but to be honest with you, you gotta scrunch things around and things change and whatnot. So I like I like that corner window there where you can see through the window to the other side. So I tried to make it real like like faint. There's my neighbor talking Spanish. Wait till they they start playing bachata and merengue. All right, there's a guy like leaning up against the glass there. He's up to no good. And he sees the cop, so he like put, tucked the drugs under it back into his pocket. <laughs> Whoa! Hit the mic. All right, yeah, the neon lights leaving their reflections. Here's a. I, I guess this is like a Chinese restaurant, but you know something, you can always count on a, tri a Chinese restaurant being in the worst neighborhoods, right? They don't care. They'll set up shop anywhere. All right, here we go. We're working on Eddie now, and now I'm stressed out. I started doing this red, and I'm like, oh, no. 
He looks like uh, Flash Gordon or some type of wackadoo superhero. I was like, oh my god, what did I do? But I knew his value had to be darker. This is this is amateur painting 101, okay? And I'm putting in his leg braces and then he looks this bright yellow. I'm like, oh god, no. I'm like, that's it. I ruined it. It's like Shazam. Or some kind of like, uh, you know, cockamamie superhero. But I'm just trying to pencil, pencil, paint things in to try to get an idea of where everything's supposed to go. Working on his helmet that I made way too big. This is like my son's bicycle helmet. Alright, you can hear my Puerto Rican tenants argue with each other while, while we're trying to discuss fine art here. Alright, putting in some of the metal structure. I love this. This is very like Terminator. Like, who is this guy? He's got these... Me He's got the striated muscle. And, like, these braces holding them together. Almost kind of like Mad Max. Kind of like Terminator. It's like the best of... Kind of like Robocop. It's like the best of everything that ever existed. Okay, we're putting in the gun here. I was nervous about the gun. I was like, I gotta get that right. This arm... is. V I was really worried about getting that arm right. The other gun... Coming in... It didn't really land where I wanted it to land. I, I didn't want it to come up toward the corner of the building. Alright, here we go with the helmet. I put in this black, like in his side. Excuse me. Put in a little bit of his face. I was, I was deathly afraid of his face. I said, let me stay away from his face until the end. Putting in some of these darker colors, because I understand it's got to be muscle. So muscle has a lot of different reds in it and whatnot. Put in his abs. I, I guess everybody in the future has ripped abs like this. Alright, has my neighbor dropping a pot on the floor. Alright, so... I think here we start to... Oh, put in some black, alright. Darkening things... Yes, we're darkening things up here. I like about his right pectoral. Our right pectoral kind of looks rounded. I think that came in from the, the darker highlights. Now come in the the lighter highlights. And then I started to realize that this might work. When I got to this point right here with the abs in the chest. I was really happy with that result. And I said, oh man. This thinking thing might work. Doing the hands a bit. Everybody knows hands are like the most difficult thing to do. So once we brought up the lightness. I was really I screwed up the abs there. Had to fix that up a bit. A little moonlight on the back of the leg there. A little reflective light from the, the fluorescence coming in. Yes. Trying to keep his holsters like a red, almost like a vinyl. That is some futuristic material. Yeah. Working on his braces a little bit. Yeah. His metal drawers. <laughs> Those were real difficult. A lot of contours, you know, you don't want to make them too big because then he looks like he's wearing a big diaper. But you also don't want him too small. Okay, this was fun. A little white on the on the uh, metal bits. It mi really makes it look like chrome, like shiny, you know? Like, oh yeah, this is metal. That's right. It's amazing what white can do. Some more highlights around the, the metal bits. Yeah. I forget. You know what I wanted to do? I really wanted to hone in the legs and work my way up. I said, if I can do the legs, here's one of my favorite parts. Putting in these black lines because he's got like these flexible, uh, almost like, uh, it's like flexible armor almost. And it's like all these like ribs on it, you know, so it can flex around and whatnot and move. Put in his little cod piece there. He's got a circle with uh, a radiation sign. Oh yeah, I get to this part. I left out one of the neon lights. I was so excited about getting the legs the way they were that I call my wife in and I say, Honey, what do you think? How do you think it's coming out? And she looks at it and she goes, You're missing the neon sign over here. And I'm like, you know what? Can I get it? Can you get, what about the legs? 
Anyhow, I'm trying to get some real dimension here, going from dark to light on the wiring. I want it to look at like 3D, like you're looking into a cavity. Oh, I love that, how it looks. There we go, that arm has the you know flexible conduit in the forearm. Oh my god. Here was the real prize. I was real excited about this. This this metal plate on the waistband. When the black lines go in, I was jumping for joy. Here we go. Ready? Bing, bang, boom. Oh, yeah! Oh my god. Some of the things were so exciting to do. Those little metal pieces. It was so fun. Here's the hands. Oh my god. I was trying to avoid them as long as I could. Hands can look real goofy real fast. There we go. I think I did all right on the hands. Here we go, lightening up the, the abs. Yes, rounding them out. Oh, yeah, this guy's in shape. Putting in highlights to suggest that there's some metal banding holding the abs back. Working on the gun. This is how the gun comes to life. Just white. Just adding white on the black. That's it. Oh, yeah, the hands. I think I got the hands gripping the gun good. I was happy about that. Here comes the rib cage. I was, like, paralyzed doing this. Was, this has to look right. It has to look in proportion. It has to. Especially this side. It has to disappear around the corner. There it goes. I, we, I think I nailed the rib cage. I'm not going to sit here and be modest. A little moonlight on that anterior deltoid. Oh, yeah. That chest is popping, baby. Yeah. It looks like he just got off the bench press. You kidding me? Okay. Working on highlighting the rib cage armor. This is what really brings it out, right? Yeah, that's it. It's it's an alloy. It's a very special alloy. Yes. Unobtainium. A little white brings it out, rounds it off, highlight it. It sticks out. It pops. Come on. Oh yeah. Here's the here we go. Here's this badge, right? This is the badge. Coming in. It's part of it's part of the whole chest plate armor. Yes. Working on the conduit. Yeah, putting some black lines across so it looks like hoses in there, you know, like flexible hoses. Oh, it was so exciting. Here we go. Ah, yes, the gun. The gun came up. It came right to the corner of the, the building. I wasn't excited about that. Has this glass cap on the end of it. Almost like a, like a TIG welding cup. Right, it has uh, sparks coming out of the top. Like he just, he just shot somebody with it. Some smoke there. Very... This is very Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Terminator, very Clint Eastwood. Right. This is very, this is, this is a Blade Runner Western. That's what's so fantastic about it. It's a futuristic Western we're watching right here. I, you know what? I never even thought about that until now. That's what this is. All right. Welcome, working on the helmet. The helmet was scaring me to death because... It's just, I thought it was too big, and then it started to, I started to rein it in a bit. There we go, all the wires coming through, yeah. The name badge. Putting in some more detail there. Here we go, the nose, the nose, I, I, I must have scrapped the nose a million times. There's the reticle. Yeah, there goes the nose again. This was fun. That, like, targeting disc that he has on the front, in front of the reticle. What is that? I don't know. Some type of targeting thing there. It's got crosshairs and whatnot. His reticle or monocle or whatever it is. Yeah, it's got the target crosshairs there. And then that, that monocle. It just... It was so much fun to do. Look, he got antenna. He's got Wi-Fi. This is 1987. He's got full-on Wi-Fi. Probably better than I have in my house. Another antenna. On the side there. Yeah, mouthpiece. He's got to talk in. You know, tell the, tell the sergeant about the uh, perp he just caught. Sergeant's like, yeah, you got him. <sighs> All right, go uh, go on vacation now. Work on your tan. <laughs> He's got the bolts in the head. Of course, it wouldn't be Eddie Maiden without the uh, cranial retaining bolts. Here we go. I had, to, I had to highlight around the eyes a bit to make the uh, raise the uh, the brow. Go around the nose, raise the, the bridge of the nose. Here come the eyes. Uh, when the eyes go in, it's almost like the Terminator coming to life. That's the way I felt about it, at least. I was like, oh, that's great. Putting in little wires and doodads here and there. 
here's the wire connecting his uh, gun to his I don't know inner thigh. That's where the that's where the, uh, the 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 nuclear reactor is that powers this guy. Okay, here's where I got cocky. Okay, here's where I thought I was like Rembrandt. And oh yeah, I'll just uh, freehand the the, uh, the letters in. No problem. This is where I need my head examined. So I get I get done with the M. I start the A, and I realize that I'm gonna run out of space really fast. And so I start to jam the letters together. And I'm like, I get up and I just start running around the room screaming because it's a wash. So I got to go back and I got to redo the whole entire top of the painting. I was crying. So what I did was I took a piece of tape and I laid out to scale the Iron Maiden logo in pencil. And then I laid the tape on the jacket and I cut it out with a razor. Okay, here's how... Here's how Here's when I almost had a mental breakdown. Because I'm only cutting out the outline. This was tedious beyond belief. I had black and blues on the end of my fingers for cutting that out. But I needed clean lines. And I, I think I accomplished that. I hope I did. <laughs> I'm trying to clean it up now. Because it needed a lot of cleaning. But I needed these lines. I needed it to be transparent like the album cover. But I also needed straight lines. There it is. There it is. Guys, I want to say thank you for watching. I want to say thank you to Derek Riggs for inspiring me to do artwork. Because I wouldn't do any of this without his inspiration. I love his artwork. And this really is a tribute to him. And uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Alright guys. Thanks. More to come.